May the blessings of God be upon you all, and good morning to you, and welcome to the second session of the Sports, Politics, Politics and Society Symposium. This session is under the title Sports and Social, Cultural and Political Development, Qatar 2022. Of the session will be, as you read in the booklet, is about Qatar. We have our speakers from Qatar University. We have three papers. The first paper will be presented jointly by two uh, researchers. Sned Da'i al Marri and Saad al Shammari. The second one will be by Kamal Hamidu. The third by Wadi Ishaq. I'll start with the first paper entitled The Cultural Impact of Qatar Hosting the World Cup. Dr. Sned is assistant lecturer in the sports uh, department at the Qatar University and uh, uh, formerly he was a supervisor at the Qatari Ministry of Education. He has many contributions including an article entitled The Reality of Strategic Planning in Sports Federations in Qatar. The second presenter is Mr. Saad Ashamari. He is a PhD candidate, South Carolina University, and he also formerly used to uh, lecture at Qatar University and also at Qatar Foundation. And he worked in the United States of uh, America. He was uh, a coordinator at the Sports Federation at Florida. He got his MA from uh, um, Florida University, and he also uh, got his UEFA diploma in refereeing from Nylon, Switzerland. We'll give you 20 minutes for the first paper. Please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Abdul Fattah, and Salam alaikum. First, I would like to thank Dr. Mahfouz and Dr. Haider. Dr. Haider and Dr. Mahfouz gave us a good introduction into sociology, and this leads us how to impact as practically in hosting the World Cup and other major sporting debate. Now Dr. Snade will talk about the cultural impact on hosting uh, the World Cup from 2002 until Russia, in the name of God, the most merciful, most compassionate. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. First, I want to talk about the importance of this uh, event, which we will host as Arabs and Muslims. And this is a golden opportunity which will not be repeated in one's lifetime. So therefore, it's an opportunity to change the image and uh, uh, what, what, what this we noticed this as Arab and Muslims. I personally, when I used to live in the United States, to change the stereotypes about us, and I'll allude to how the Qatari leadership are planning to reflect Qatar's culture and heritage through organizing this event and also. Uh, the changes uh, which took place in Qatar since we were awarded the organization of uh, Qatar and uh, uh, 
starting from the infrastructure and also the workers' rights and other issues. Also, uh, globally, Qatar has been the focus of the world since we were awarded uh, the right to organize Ka the World Cup. Uh, people started thinking about Qatar, what's been happening, the workers' rights and others, the infrastructure, building the rail structure and uh, also, the stadiums themselves, starting from Al Bayt, which represents uh, the Qatar culture and uh, uh, and the uh, Arabic tent as a home and hospitality, and uh, other stadiums which reflect other aspects of our heritage. And then we uh, alluded to the linkage between culture and sport. Any community in the world, when it organizes a sporting event, avails itself of the opportunity to express and uh, to change the stereotyping, which is often negative. So sport, major sporting events are the best method to alter that and improve it. Then after that, we talked about uh, World Cup finals, starting from Korea and Japan, and uh, how the World Cup turned them into two friendly and cooperating countries, despite the legacy of World War II since the 40s. Uh, yet the World Cup Finals helped them to build bridges. They were the first two Asian countries to organize the World Cup Finals. The Koreans and the Japanese wanted the world to know the details of uh, life, the life of their people, and also to allow Japanese players to play in Korea was a historical precedent. Also, relations between Korea and China have developed to after this major event. Then we moved to Germany in 2006 and how Germany managed to change the stereotype about them. We all know the negative that all people in the world used to view the German people because of their Nazi past and also the Germans also made sure that they awarded uh, a very wonderful hospitality and they managed to change the stereotype about them. Then we moved to South Africa and how South Africa suffered from the racial discrimination aspect and apartheid and the fact that they were allowed to uh, host the World Cup final was in itself an indication that they managed to change this negative stereotype. And also, also they, they, they reflected their own cultural heritage and added an element of enjoyment. After that came the Brazil FIFA finals and how Brazil benefited, benefited economically. They had economic problems and they had issues in the relationship between the government and the people. And they managed to successfully host this event and changing the economic game. They also, they managed to integrate the youth and uh, encourage them to be independent. Uh, the, the Brazilian youth used to be late uh, in their lifetimes in becoming independent. Then we come to Russia and how the Russians managed to succeed in changing the stereotypes about... Uh, in the past, we looked at Russia as a military type of government and a country which was not safe and we see we realized 
how uh, Russia was a rich country in its culture, and they too managed to change the Im their image. And we see how tourism has improved, and also they managed to market more than one city and more than one culture. After that, I'll give the floor now to my colleague Saad, and he is a PhD candidate to talk about uh, the role of women in sports and how Qatar has benefited from this major invest to change our image as Arabs and Muslims. Thank you, Dr. Snaid. A part of the positive aspects of the changes in life in the last 20 years is the participation of women in football and also World Cup football for women and also countries legislating to allow women to take part in the, also Title VI and IX which which allowed women to form their own football teams and take part in them. And FIFA allowed uh, the World Cup for women, which started in China in 1991. And this was the uh, point of departure and the stereotype of women of women in the world was different. and women were different and football was a masculine game so women suffered from that but after the new legislation the situation has changed and people now became more introduced and more familiar to the legacy side of these uh, uh, events uh, like women as players as organizers so this was the change, the positive change. It started a small number of teams, but with the uh, expansion of events, the situation has improved. Uh, usually, the cultural aspects are not noticed at the beginning of the road, but this comes later. Now we'll talk about the World Cup and Qatar's hosting of, of it and the legacy. When it was announced in, 2000 and in 2010 to, um, to organize World Cup uh, finals, uh, uh, from 2001 till 2010, the stereotype uh, of image of Arabs and Muslims was very bad in the aftermath of 9-11. So therefore, uh, the, uh, awarding Qatar the right to organize and host uh, the World Cup Finals was like a lifeline to change people's world. F for example, some women used to suffer from wearing the hijab but uh, the announcement of Qatar hosting the World Cup was a lifeline to drag the Arab and Muslim culture from this imagined quagmire. This was the first uh, positive thing. Then the government of Qatar and the leaders of the sporting activity managed in transferring Arab culture uh, to the world, especially through the design of some stadiums. This was like a very important turning point. And the people who, who visited them and saw how Arabs are proud of their attire, and this has contributed to changing the attitude. transferring culture and the spreading culture will not be the job of one particular department. Some people think that the committee of the volunteers or the Supreme Committee for Legacy and Delivery think are the, they are the sole responsible parties. And they expect that these specific uh, entities to be solely 
responsible, but the people have uh, an important role in uh, reacting to the visitors and accepting them and cooperating with them. So generally, culture is present in any major event, and it's more so in sporting events, and uh, it's usually will be the focus of attention because uh, the people who visit the country will focus on certain specific aspects. We try to cover the previous things that took place in previous World Cup finals and link them to our organization and the t the, the are good glad tidings and we hope it will be all positive. Finally, we hope that we we'll live up to our responsibilities as Arab and Muslims in changing this previous stereotype. We have an Arab Islamic legacy and culture of like, uh, being uh, hospitable to our visitors and kind and cooperative. We should reflect that we should wait for someone to sign a role to us. We are all responsible for it. Thank you, Doctor, for this paper. Indeed, uh, this uh, cultural dimension is uh, uh, important. We'll move to Mr. Uh, Kamal Hamidu. He's an assistant uh, professor at the University of Qatar. And he works uh, at a French uh, university and uh, a university in the Emirates. Uh, and he has a number of publications in English and uh, French and Arabic. Uh, and he talked about the Qatari experience. Uh, and he talked uh, about, uh, you'll be talking about. Uh, the media and sports as instruments to construct and promote national symbols, the Qatari strategy as a model. Please, the floor is yours. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, Dr. Abdel Fattah, colleagues, panelists, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning uh, to you. Peace be upon you. It gives me great pleasure to be standing before you to talk uh, in brief about a study that uh, I have uh, prepared and that has focused on the role of sports and media in Qatar. In this study, we have analyzed the strategy of the state of Qatar in light with a foreign context that throws into the path of such strategy some obstacles, especially when it comes to competition on the part of uh, the neighboring countries. Uh, and uh, due to the negative impact of some international media negative uh, content that uh, is geared towards uh, undermining the reputation of Qatar, and uh, being skeptic vis-a-vis -vis such uh, issues. A 
Indeed, uh, Qatar has resorted to the soft uh, power, especially through media and sports, uh, as uh, they represent two branches uh, and components uh, of uh, the formation of uh, uh, such strategy. We had four questions in this study. First, uh, do we have uh, clear indications uh, of the effectiveness of the Qatari strategy? And what are the bases uh, upon which uh, the strategy has been built uh, in order to refine the name of Qatar internationally? And uh, thirdly, the components of the soft power, the marketing elements, and how Qatar has utilized this very issue in order to boost its reputation. Uh, we have resorted to Simon Arnold that suggests the assessment of uh, this issue on the basis of the presence uh, or absence of uh, uh, three uh, elements. Uh, indeed, uh, policies are not enough uh, to promote the national symbols uh, and uh, they do not convince uh, some foreigners uh, to dispense with any stereotypical kind of thinking because a resistance is there when it comes to the image of the other. The national uh, symbol equates nation branding. It can be also interpreted as the national symbol. It is uh, the marketing efforts, uh, the marketing efforts, uh, the communication efforts, uh, the promotion efforts uh, that focus on certain elements, uh, cultural, media related, industrial, uh, uh, cultural and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, through such efforts, uh, we would reach outcomes, impressions uh, on the part of the recipients uh, that we call uh, the formative uh, thinking. And uh, this kind of uh, concept uh, is an industrious kind of uh, uh, process uh, that is uh, uh, convoluted. Uh, it relates to the history of the, con the given country and the other uh, component, uh, the socio-economic, cultural and political and so on and so forth. Uh, this helps uh, the recipient to have uh, an impression on this particular country and the people thereby and the institutions. We do understand that the reputation of a given country relates to some stereotype kind of related thinking that are far away from being factual in addition to the stereotypes. Uh, the stereotypes on Switzerland is uh, to do with the banking system and uh, the beautiful landscapes. Uh, Germany is the country of uh, the industry, discipline and a model for being friendly, environment friendly country. Japan is uh, the hub of uh, electronics, uh, the robots, uh, the industrial automation. Taiwan is also famous of uh, being an imitator of such industry. Simon Arnold uh, believes uh, that uh, the nation branding must hinge on three components. First, to have strategy. Second, to have a substance that represents uh, the center of the uh, process. Uh, and also, the symbolic actions. Thirdly, that uh, must be repeated in order for such process to better the reputation. Arnold 
has explained the strategy as follows. It is uh, to understand the nation in question, its status, uh, in addition to its objectives. Uh, and uh, there are two uh, challenges uh, that are linked to developing the strategy. First, to align the desires of uh, a number of stakeholders uh, to adopt a vision that is unified uh, and to determine a strategic objective that is inspiring and applicable, especially when these two elements are somewhat conflicting. The second pillar is the essence, and Arnold believes uh, that it is the capacity of uh, a given country to transform the theory into practice, uh, to have innovations, legislations, reforms, and so on and so forth. The third pillar is to do with the symbolic actions, uh, and Arnold has defined them as uh, certain inputs uh, that are to do with legislations, reforms, investments, uh, and are peculiar because they are innovative, uh, unforgettable, emotional, and somewhat dramatic. And most importantly, these actions uh, must uh, represent the nation branding, and they must uh, represent the tools uh, that can be utilized. We have assessed the way we could utilize these three pillars uh, in order to understand whether there is a crystal clear strategy to formulate the nation branding and whether there are symbolic actions uh, and whether there are nine elements uh, as per Denicate uh, and they are the name of the brand, uh, the symbol, the vision, the attributes, uh, activities, uh, the scope, the idiosyncrasy, the historic narrative, and uh, the holder, the ideological holder. And uh, we have focused on the central part played by sports and media in formulating uh, the national symbols or the nation's branding as means of promoting the image of Qatar. Uh, following uh, the unhold approach, uh, we have reached the following outcomes. First, it is clear that uh, there are indications for a fully-fledged strategy to build the nation's branding that reflects uh, a vision that Qatar desires to be. And indeed, uh, the strategy had followed uh, the Hamad bin Khalifa's uh, reform package following the 2011-2016 uh, development strategy and then 2018-2022 development strategy. and. Uh, complemented by Qatar Vision 2030 that uh, embodied developmental and reformist uh, measures uh, whereby media and uh, sport played a major role. There were also a number of uh, decisions uh, that are pertinent to symbolic actions uh, in order to have an impact. Uh, for example, and this has been mentioned by uh, the two gentlemen, the abolishment of uh, media censorship uh, to promote uh, the human rights related uh, legislations and to improve uh, the kafala system, having municipal elections. And these are just examples. Thirdly, it transpired uh, that 
the media and sports played a pivotal role in this strategy because they are two components of the mosaic of the nation's branding and they are two carriers of the nation's branding the media has started with baby steps Al Jazeera has been launched and then the Al Jazeera sports later on these efforts led to a media empire that emphasized the soft power of Qatar in the sports and in other facets of media the strategy has hinged on an ambitious agenda Al Jazeera has become global and uh, beyond sports uh, is playing the pivotal role in this regard so do you have slides uh, behind you i have only two tables that i'll be displaying later fourth uh, the uh, uh, building of uh, the qatari nation's uh, branding related to denicate nine elements uh, in addition to the presence of uh, the pertinent activities, especially when it comes to the name, the symbol, and I shall explain that uh, in the table, as well as uh, the activities and other nine uh, elements uh, in this regard. So, as you can see on the table, in the right-hand uh, column, we talk about the elements uh, of uh, the elements, and then uh, the influential points, and then uh, the as far as the name is concerned. Here we're talking about Qatar and the symbol is to do with the Annabi, the pearl, the oryx, the purple color and uh, the influence is local, regional and international and the marketing element is very important uh, here I'm talking about the means uh, that uh, uh, is being used uh, and the scope uh, or the targeted uh, 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 audience As far as the vision is concerned here, we're talking about the reformist agenda of uh, the Father Emir and then uh, the development uh, strategy, the first and the second, and then uh, vision, the Qatari vision 2030. As far as uh, the point of inf impact of uh, these manifestations, uh, most of them are local and then regional and international, and uh, the careers are to do with marketing, media, and communication. As far as the attributes are concerned, here we're talking about uh, the media dynamism being open, innovation, success, excellence, and uh, uh, the real estate industries boom. And uh, as far as uh, the pertinent activities are concerned, here we talk about the media impact, then diplomacy, sports, and the modernization of the infrastructure and to the left hand side you can see the scope of impact and the idiosyncrasy of uh, the branding we have uh, a number of uh, issues that relate to the geography the desert the desert the sea and the capability of hosting uh, major tournaments uh, the infrastructure as far as uh, the historic narrative uh, here we talk about loyalty to the forefathers here we talk also about uh, an Islam that is open to modernity and to the other as we have analyzed uh, the strategy it uh, transpired that uh, sports diplomacy had played a major role covering major events uh, organized by Qatar is geared towards boosting the reputation of Qatar and the promotion of the national symbols 
The events themselves are being transformed into a communicative kind of channels. Indeed, Qatar is utilizing the pre-World Cup era to boost development and to sell the national uh, symbols as uh, being a booster to the importance of uh, Qatar as a tourist destination. The FIFA World Cup 2022 has uh, uh, constituted a marketing tool, a mobilization tool uh, locally in order to liaise with the rest of the world and to boost uh, the nation's branding of Qatar. The sports diplomacy tools in this table and they relate to three elements uh, to build the reputation to be idiosyncratic, to be open to the world, to make Qatar the hub of sports and to shed light on the prominent athletes and the strategic goals are to do with boosting the reputation, to have global ambitions and for Qatar to be pioneering in sports uh, as well as to be pioneering in innovation. The other issue is uh, to boost the presence of the media, Qatar's commitment to the sports-related standards, uh, to invest in the global sports clubs, uh, to have ambitions in place uh, and to refine its reputation to perpetuate uh, an openness uh, propensity in Qatar and to boost uh, the, des the destination as a touristic attraction to host uh, major events uh, in a peculiar way to have the infrastructure that is innovative uh, and to provide uh, media related services that are excellent uh, the opulence of uh, the infrastructure and uh, the hosting capabilities uh, to boost uh, the capability of Qatar to host major events uh, to uh, perpetuate its reputation in this uh, domain and to resort to marketing in order to promote the national symbols or the nation's branding. In conclusion, I'd like to say that uh, the path of the promotion of Qatar's nation branding, national branding, uh, has been uh, who has begun rather uh, since uh, the midst of the 90s um, in order to boost the reputation, the positive reputation and a number of uh, uh, studies uh, have uh, proved uh, the effectiveness of such path. Uh, John Mark King's study is a testimony to this, uh, albeit uh, regardless of the achievements uh, uh, in marketing the good reputation of Qatar through the public diplomacy, the media and the sports related diplomacy that taps into uh, organizing major events, especially the FIFA World Cup 2022, still we do have uh, obstacles that ought to be surmounted in order to uh, boost and perpetuate the positive uh, reputation of Qatar globally and to have sustainable investments in the land, uh, especially in the post-2022 World Cup era. The issue is to do with the capacity of uh, the continuation of such efforts uh, to have inputs uh, that promote uh, the Qatari national branding and perhaps uh, the reformist, modernist uh, approach uh, is a prerequisite uh, despite the fact uh, that uh, this might uh, necessitate taking uh, certain bold decisions uh, uh, in this uh, regard, especially uh, uh, as we see cultural and uh, social transformations uh, that might lead to different destinations. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Dr. Kamal, for respecting the time limit and this clear and valuable presentation. 
The last presentation will be by Dr. Wadi' Isaac from Qatar University. He will be evaluating the emotional and phys physiological impact of hosting international sports events, youth uh, residents, uh, a case study of Qatar. He has uh, a number of publications to his name on hosting major sporting events. Dr. Eswadia, you have 20 minutes. Assalamu alaikum. I will uh, I'll speak in English uh, because of the terminology. Shukran Thank you so much for this opportunity. I will be continuing what exactly my fellows, colleagues, has mentioned about these investments in, in Qatar is doing in terms of uh, investing and hosting uh, sports events. And I will be focusing mainly on the perceived impact within the host nation, mainly in residents in Qatar. So I've been, I've been trying to assess and understand what's happening since the beginning, since the country decided to start to host sports events, and how is this implicated in their mission and their vision, and how, how, is it, how is it affecting the society itself. Therefore, my focus is on residents, mainly youth residents, and I will explain why. Just to make a small recap about what happened and why these uh, countries are investing, many research have been focusing on why the Arab world is hosting sports events. Some of them discussed about tourism, some of them discussed about political uh, uh, impact, some of them discussed about environmental, economic, uh, globalization, commercializations. Though no one has discussed how is this affecting the society itself? What's happening within the society? Is there any changes happening? Yo, we speak about like obesity, we speak about uh, approaching investors, we, we speak about we need to maintain a political situation. So what's happening with our residents? Is there any positive impacts happening within the society itself? So um, as, I, as, I, as I just mentioned previously that these investments can be related to geopolitical objectives. It can be uh, different uh, impacts as well related to, to diversify their economy away from the oil and gas, to appeal to the international uh, community, what just Dr. Uh, Hamidou mentioned uh, uh, recently, and get international support and uh, obtain assistance when needed. It. And definitely the main, the main hub, it is tourism sector to attract tourists. So within 2030 uh, vision, uh, the country uh, main, uh, mentioned that they want to reshape its position internationally and regionally while addressing human, social, economic, and environmental development. The country developed strategies to implement within the sports sector, highlighting the role of sports play in diversifying the economy and developing the society. Sports plays a major role within human development, introducing an active lifestyle, social development, improving community, cohesion and international solidarity, economic development through raising environmental consciousness and using ecological friendly support facilities and goods. Very important, very interesting. Though how is this affecting again the society? The internal society, not only what we want to, how we want to look to the international. Is there any changes happening within the society? My paper focuses on the impact associated with the 2015 Handball World Championship and the 2019 IAAF Athletics. These two events happened here in the country. I mainly focused on youth to understand if there are any changes happened after hosting these events. Therefore, my work is focusing on comparing, comparing how and what are the changes happening on different layers within society. I mainly focused on trying to address the psychic income, which it's one of the constructs used to define the psychological advantages created by an, indiv an indiv individual. Crompton, who developed this approach, was one of the pioneers in the psychic income, and uh, he was using it to understand how sports, hosting sports event can influence the residents of a nation. He defines psychic income as the emotional and psychological benefits res residents perceive they receive even though they do not physically 
attend sports events and are not involved in organizing them. The five pillars that define the psychic income are community pride, community attachment, event excitement, community infrastructure, and community excitement. Does these events are affecting the society in these pillars? Let's see. So, 2015, Handball World Championship, amazing achievement for the Qatar and Qatar uh, uh, Handball Ball team. IAAF, with all what we've heard on the media, yet there was come, uh, some positive impact happening within the society. There were any difference between the 2015 and the 2019. We collected data from students after the event took, uh, after both events took uh, place. The 2015, uh, we used a, um, we adopted the framework developed by Crompton and by Kim and Walker, assessing the different uh, uh, pillars. Each pillar was focusing on five to seven questions, and the same questionnaire was repeated with the same group of people, the same age, university student in 2019. So, interestingly, what we find here, that in green it is the impact generated from 2019, and pink, well, violet, it's like the 2015 Handball World Championship, and we can see within the scale each of the pillars that you've been assessing. You can hear me, right? So, we have the community pride, event excitement, uh, event uh, excitement within the community, event excitement. Yes, sorry. So I will go back. Um, and we can find here that, for instance, on the community pride, in comparison between the 2015 and the 2019, there was a higher impact within, uh, perceived within the youth in Qatar. So we can find here that the level is higher compared to 2015. These impacts it's, are a are little bit similar within the whole five components, the way that we see it here. If we go further, we can find that, interestingly, we followed a man with new test uh, uh, approach in order to be able to uh, uh, differentiate and to see the difference between these uh, two events. Thank you. Thank you. So, within this table, and if you look to the last component, the psychological and emotional impact, we can see the total perceived within the 2015 and the 2019. Therefore, this is the Handball World Championship. Those are the uh, participants. And this is the median of the results we've, uh, we've, we found. We, we, we followed a scale from one to seven, and this is the median we find that in 2015, the perceived impact after the event took itself, it was 5.22 out of seven. And in the 2019, we found that the perceived impact has improved. So it's 5.9. That's the total. In each of the uh, components, we can see here, and for, in for instance, community price was one of the highest. In 2015, 6.33, and 2019, 6.57. What does this mean? That there was more engagement within the community itself, so they felt prouder. Enhanced, enhanced community attachment, we can find that it was almost the same the attachment in terms of within the community, and this is, can be liaised and related to different, uh, uh, different uh, reasons. The event, event excitement, we find that the 2015 Handball World Championship, it was 4.5, though in 2019 World Athletic Championships, it was 5.67. Interestingly, the game itself, and this is, we go back to the first, uh, uh, our colleagues when they were mentioning the sports itself that we are playing. What is the connection between the society, the residents, and the sports itself? And maybe here, the reason why we find this event excitement is higher in, 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 in the athletics more than the, uh, the handball, it's for maybe the players who are playing. So we have Mu'taz Barsham, he is a Qatari player, a famous one, who was like reaching a really high level, and this is, could be more engaging to society. This is one of the reasons. 
uh, when we go to the pride to improve the infrastructure. So with all the investment the, the, the country is doing in terms to reach the 2030 vision, developing the country, developing, providing infrastructure, we can see that the residents are recognizing the uh, improvements the country is doing and the effort the country is doing with the numbers that we are finding. And we can see here that it has increased compared to the 2015. Yet the last pillar that I would like to talk about is the community excitement and we can see definitely a slight improvement within uh, the residents of the country. And remember, we are focusing only on use. Those are the pioneer for the futures. Those who are defined by the country are the new leaders. So is there any impact on these new leaders? There will be any transformation within society in a few years on the long run? And the results so far shows a, a positive impact. So as I was mentioning now that an improvement in the positive impact was perceived, and this reflected in the five dimensions. Uh, one of the researchers has mentioned that the well-known athletes and professional particip participating in a sports event can generate enthusiasm and excitement, and this is exactly what we found. In fact, having Qatari and Arab athletes participating in the IAAF can explain the increase in event excitement among residents compared to the 2015 handball. Community pride and image variable results, which indicate a positive outcome amongst respondents. Hosting sports events have a remarkable ability to promote the image of the host city and boost the sense of pride among residents. Ghadir uh, Eal, in their uh, uh, research in 2021, when they assessed the small, uh, small city, uh, uh, mentioned that the pride could not be measured on the short run. And this is exactly uh, uh, expressed why we focus on news. And this is meet the uh, 2030 vision and the decision makers' uh, approach in building a society and young generation who will become a better leaders in the future. Hence, our findings extend the exciting knowledge to the outcome of several international sports events by showing that the outcome of the five dimensions can be triggered by the continuity of hosting frequently different type of international sports events. Though, on the community attachment, community infrastructure, community ex excitement, we found that there is a slight change. This is, could be related to the fact that we have reached building the country. We have reached in terms of infrastructure. At the day one, when we had one stadium, people were more excited. Though now we have five stadiums, this is might met the uh, needs of the society. The improvement sati uh, satisfactions comparing to the 2019 event can be reflected by the sports event's ability to bond with participants or to get known or meet new people. Our study adds to the knowledge of improving satisfaction with non-participants. The results show that hosting sports event can boost community belonging and empowerment. Therefore, the study strengthened these findings by increasing satisfaction and the community attachment dimension. These findings will be necessary for organizers, especially with the increase in emotion through the time. Uh, it's very important to highlight that the blockade back then in 2019 might be one of the main pillars that triggered the pride within the community. So this is go back to answer a few of the questions that were asked in the previous session, saying that is this really sports should be in the middle and then understanding it from different dimensions or we should take sports and understand it in each international relation, and in sociology, and economy, though the answer would be it's all about how it is perceived within society. There are many different layers of sports. There are many different understandings to the need of sports, though what will be the main pillar and the main importance is how is this reshaping our society. Thank you so much. Shukran, Dr. المهم والقيم احنا في هذه الجلسه ثلاثه ثلاث اوراق متكامله الثقافه والاعلام ثم دراسه عن يعني تقييم وقياس الاثر also measuring the impact of sports events 
we hope to come back in future uh, symposiums to discuss further these aspects and uh, to measure the impact of these events and others as we have. Now we have good time and uh, th all our panelists uh, respected the time limit so we have uh, time for discussion. Who wants to discuss the impact from the point of view of culture, media, and society. Thank you very much for the organizers. Abdul Rahim Gharib from uh, Madiotsi in Morocco. Maybe one of the most important reasons for the success in uh, Russia's uh, organization of the World Cup Finals was the mass or popular mobilization. Everybody participated from their point of view. My question is, what about uh, the people of Qatar? Because this is uh, an, an the first Arab hosting, what about mobilizing Arab peoples and what is the impact for this in consolidating the f sense of belonging and also social cohesion? Thank you. Thank you, indeed. Very interesting, Dr. Kamal, if you allow me, if I ask you, can you explain the last two elements? I think one is related to culture or education. You spoke about the local impact, if I can remember rightly. Most of the, the efforts had uh, specific uh, objectives and a certain scope of influence. From my perspective, I determined the scope of influence. Was it local, regional, or international according to their importance? I want you to tell me the explanation. Why have you chosen these scopes or fields of influence and also the last element in your timetable. The question, I'm from Tatouan in Morocco. My intervention will be an interaction with the, what the panelists have said. They talked about culture, globalization, national entity. The first two speakers uh, spoke about the cultural impact on Qatar hosting the World Cup. I found that they talked about Qatari culture as if it's one cohesive, consistent culture. When we talk about culture, this leads us to talking about identity. Because we live in a globalized age, we cannot talk about one culture, we talk about different uh, identities. Amnon uh, Castez spoke about this. 
uh, that is not the state, uh, but uh, even cities that we live in, we have uh, different cultures, and every each individual has his own culture, and he lives through that. Also, it's difficult to talk about nation states which are fully sovereign, like when Max Weber talked about borders and each country has its own borders, it's difficult now to speak in these terms. So to what extent can we talk about sovereignty exclusive in the exclusive sense when we talk about we talk about the nation state when all of its citizens are similar and also my other question is to Sneid and Saad about the intersections of uh, globalization and the local aspects uh, in the field of sports. Thank you. Let's take some answers then we may come back to another uh, round. We start with the same order regarding the question about the uh, Arabs and their role in the cause His Highness uh, the Emir, Sheikh Tamim, always said that this is a championship for the Arabs and the Arab countries and we also saw how Arab countries cooperated and allowed the holders of the Hayya card to enter without visas and also the Arab Cup final 2020 was like a rehearsal for this, for this championship as Arabs. The Qatari family unit is the building block. In other countries, individuals are like we, the Qataris represent less than 10% of the total population, but our culture is based on the family unit and is very strong. Saad, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I want to add something to what the questioner said. You spoke about promoting culture in the international sense. In the paper, I spoke about promoting local culture through new globalized approaches. For example, you can build a stadium uh, basing your design on an inspiration from the local culture, but according to the contemporary requirements. So this was our approach and we will see the fruits of this during and after the World Cup. First of all, uh, in response to Dr. Abdul Rahim's question, what about mobilizing the, the Arab and Qatari masses? There is a huge effort in mobilizing the Qatari uh, people through different campaigns and uh, different uh, initiatives. The initiatives did not stop at mobilizing Qatari people, but uh, there were events uh, in Arab countries. For example, the Qatari ambassador in Algeria moved from one state to another to um, encourage the Algerian crowds, uh, supporters to come and take part. I share with you that this is not an exclusively Qatar event. It is an Arab and Islamic event. Qatar does not claim that uh, that the credit in organizing this goes to itself only. Qatar always say that this is a Qatari Arab Islamic uh, event so there is this aspect and there is this dimension especially when it comes to making sure that uh, uh, arabic spectators arab spectators can 
can, which can compensate for the lack of Qatari supporters and spectators. Uh, somebody asked me how, on what basis I made this classification. This is in my own classification. I try to explain that what is what is important to most important on a scale. Of, some things are uh, directed at local audience, some regional, some international. It's true that uh, I personally and uh, this research will be followed by more research. When I was asked to prepare this paper, I was only given three weeks. I didn't have time to have some surveys and questionnaires and empirical research. But uh, I hope in the future someone will build on this paper in the future. As for the question regarding the concept of sovereignty and the nation state, etc., you 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 link this with the question of sovereignty as far as i can understand the question and i disagree with you in we live in the age of uh, nationalism i think the rise of uh, right wing uh, parties in in the west when russia when when Russia attacks the Ukraine and wants to restore its uh, uh, sovereignty, if we can call it that, on the Ukraine because it was part of the older Russia or Soviet Union. So these are important indications should, which should be taken into account. And uh, we, um, this is a globalized world, but we must also seek our specificities to be achieved. We should not allow for globalization to uh, obliterate us from existence. Thank you, Dr. Abdul Rahim. I'll be fast. Uh, the, uh, some, in some of the uh, answer will be in figures. Some of the recent figures on the psychic income for the host residents in 2019, we took subgroups, we divided them into three groups first by nationality. First, the Qataris, then Arabs, but non Qataris. All the Arabs who speak Arabic from the MENA region, but they are non Qataris. And we took the non Arabs and we found that in their responses, uh, the improvements all had uh, positive impact on pride and community in engagement. So uh, everybody felt it was a positive uh, impact, but it varied according to nationality. Maybe language plays a role because marketing is not all in English. Sometimes it's, it's uh, most of the marketing is done in Arabic. Also, the, the political problems between Arab countries, the Lebanese person who resides in Qatar, the, the North African who live in Qatar, they have problems. They feel that Qatar is their own country, so their engagement is bigger. About the non-figure, non-facts and figures part of it, it was obvious that uh, this event was thought and perceived by people that this is an event for the Arab world. And we see through our own observations that this event is an event for the Arab world, not just part of it. And also uh, when UAE, Dubai, and Saudi Arabia and other Gulf countries which are taking part in hosting the fans. Maybe we have time for two more questions.
Hassan Hamdi from the Minister of Education, Dr. Snead and Dr. Saad, we agree that there will be cultural impact on hosting this event. What should uh, educationalists do to protect these gains? Also, will the people who belong to the sporting realm will have more and new responsibilities after the event? Assalamu alaikum. Hisham Kamuni from the School of Psychology in Fez University. I want to move to another dimension away from impact or promoting culture to another thing which is a taboo, maybe. And that is when culture, other cultures through this event will come to Qatar and there is a cultural challenge that there will be other cultures. Uh, maybe, maybe there was a lot of talk about the community of, uh, of the LGBTQS I want to know how to know how Qatar is preparing to uh, face this kind of a challenge because this is an Arab event and also uh, not only an Arab country but an Arab country with an Islamic background and how can this challenge be faced in Qatar of course, uh, with respecting the specific uh, Qatari culture and Islamic culture uh, added to other social forms of behavior. Thank you. Now with the final, the final remarks, please. First, uh, regarding the first question, uh, His Highness the Amir, the father, Sheikh Ham Hamad bin Khalifa, he is an astute man. He banked on sports, and sports has become the fourth pillar of communal development. Qatar, Qatar adopted sports as a pillar of social development, so this will be an important aspect. Uh, I always say that uh, Qatari culture relies on the family unit. We as uh, Qatari culture, as uh, natives and uh, residents, do not fear for us because we have our own filters. Regarding the question by Dr. Hisham, when other cultures come to Qatar, I think Dr. Wadia talked about the social change aspect. I think his field of study is, is a kind of gauging in these studies from 2015 to 2019, but we have to take this into consideration, this kind of influences and impacts. But going back to what Dr. Sned has said, I don't think we should fear for the Qatari Qatar because the Qatari society is open on other uh, countries. In Qatar, there is between 121 to 140 different nationalities. So therefore, the presence of uh, different spectators for a month or two will not change the society. I understand your concern. I I know the pressures regarding the flags which may be raised by the LGBTQS community. I think Qatar will deal with this uh, uh, positively when the moment comes. I don't think nothing of the sort will happen because there are things which uh, contravene 
with the f values of the families and the pristine nature of our culture and principles. And if Qatar gives any concessions, it will be just a nominal, nominal uh, concession, not a fundamental one. And also allowing for the consumption of alcohol before matches. This is really, we should deal with um, uh, more as more of a security concern than a cultural one. I know the cultural society is a conservative one, as a uh, society which is religious by nature, and also the Arab and Muslim community who live here have the same keenness on preserving these principles. So in this regard, I am optimistic, but so far as the security side, I worry a little bit. I met with the members of the Supreme Committee because allowing the Brits, for example, the hooligans, the British hooligans, can lead them to some sort of unpredictable uh, types of behavior. Maybe it will be deliberate also. Maybe they'll uh, try to, for example, uh, behave in a way which can be abusive towards a mosque or something. We have to be aware of that and be aware that uh, incidents like this, if they occur, not to allow them to be uh, used against Qatar and the image of Qatar. Uh, I'll try to respond to Mr. Hisham's point about other cultures coming to Qatar. The question is, is the West prepared to accept a culture which is different than their own? This is the question. So therefore, Qatar, by attracting these international events, is giving a clear message that I respect you, and come, when you come to me, you should respect me too. This is my culture, and this, uh, the starting point is I am accepting your culture. Now, is a French person or a British person with their own culture are prepared to change that, to accept the other. This is an important consideration. Now, what will Qatar do is very important, of course. This will develop Qatar to be able to accommodate everybody. But I have the same right to ask you. I am accommodating you, accepting you. How are you? How about you? very important way of ending the session. I think this was a very thorough session. We hope to come back soon to answer more questions. The questions were raised about the future. We will ask Dr. Haider and Dr. Muldi to organize other events for us to come back. Thank you very much. Now we have a lunch break.